Good evening, everyone. Let's kill the music. Let's get ready. We have a change in schedule here as our Division E secondary match for the doubleheader was unfortunately a forfeit, but we have swooped in, found a Division B game waiting to be cast. It is going to be 10 Armor versus Drop Dead Gorgeous, both from Division B West. 10 Armor sitting at a record of 6 and 8, Drop Dead Gorgeous sitting at 6 and 6. Both teams in the middle of the pack in this final push towards the playoffs with round 4, the final of the rounds coming up next week. We are currently loading them into and getting them invited here into their first match, which is going to be on Dragonshire. So let me check on the teams and we will review the coin toss here shortly. Stay tuned. Division B West coming up. Once again, we are loading the teams up into the lobby here for the first match. Stay tuned, enjoy the music. Good old classic HOTS music. And then once we get ready to go here, we will introduce my co-caster and the rest of the pick and bands from the coin toss. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are waiting on one person to join the lobby here. This Division B West match between 10 Armor and Drop Dead Gorgeous. Joining me tonight for the second cast of the evening is going to be Tyro. Hey, everybody. Thanks, Mystics, for having me. Happy to have you here, man. Definitely looking forward to this one. This is a division two ranks above our, above mine, and three above yours. That is correct. So maybe we'll learn something here. I hope so. If I can't, then I'm not a very good captain. <laughs> no. Wouldn't be very good casters either if we're not looking for things to learn. Yeah. Right now, I wish I had water instead of ice cream, though. I'm kind of feeling the opposite. But <laughs> it looks like we got a mix-up on the teams here, so let's swap them around. There we go. That looks right. I think we're about ready. Captain tags are getting approved. Teams are set up correctly. I did it again, Tyrell. Left the music on the entire time we were talking. Feels bad. Let's get the ready checks from the captains and see if we can't get this underway. I love it whenever captains give phonetics for hard names. So, un Unitas. Oh, okay. That's the that's the hard name here. I, you know, how many cupcakes? I'm looking like at the, the up now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I got that right. It's going to feel bad if I if I didn't. <laughs> we should interview just to make sure that we, we did it right. Regardless, he wins. Feels good. Definitely, definitely. We will definitely have an interview afterwards. Possibly two if it's a, if it's a draw. 
Uh, if it is a draw, I'd like to do both. If it's a domination, we will interview the winning team. What do you personally think about the map, Dragonshire? Uh, I'm 50-50 on it. It depends on, depends on if it's quick match or if it's a draft. We are going to kick this off here. Let's get this game started. Dragonshire. Right on into the draft. One of the fastest loads of the night there. My opinion on Dragonshire, it's one of those maps where you... The team fight focus needs to stay towards one lane, really. If your team is stuck trying to rotate and fight all three lanes at once, you're going to lose that shrine pretty quick, either be by getting picked off or by the unfortunate circumstances just not making those rotations in times. I see a lot of teams have the best luck when they pick a lane, pick a shrine, usually the bottom one, uh, and just keep the fight going over it the entire time. So 10 Armor is going to have the first ban here, and they're going to go with the Oblo. Not really surprising. We're in Division B West. I expect to see a lot more bands and picks that are a bit closer to the meta than what you know, we'd see in my division, for example. <laughs> what, like the murky and the... Yeah, yeah, murky. Oh, look, there's a flying Samuro. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely some interesting drafts down in our, in our area. But there's a Genji, there's Diablo on the, post, on the sides there. No surprises here, especially on this map. Genji can be... Really good at driving those teams off or just coming out of nowhere over the bush and just getting that final kill on somebody. I don't know if the teams will go for this, and I don't know if it's good, but I love to see Zeratul. If you run a 1-1-3 on this map with Zeratul in the middle, his gank presence is so strong. But it's kind of easy to counter at the same time. Yeah, he makes a great last pick here if they've got the right to comp for it, as is usually the case. And we got a double tank ban coming out of 10 armor, so it looks like they may be focusing on somebody on the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous. Uh, Diablo, definitely a good ma a good uh, tank. I lost my words. Diablo, definitely a good tank ban here with the tight little shrine areas. Yeah, banning Diablo, banning Murden. I almost expect to see him pick up Joanna, that, that third meta tank, or... Uh... Maybe the garage, but definitely prior to it. Ugh, I'm losing my words. Prioritize the tank. And they don't. Jaina. Wow. First pick, Jaina. Jaina out the gate. We had Jimmy as the second band from the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous. I was kind of wanting to see how Asphodan falls into play with Division B. Uh, I've had some good luck with them here on Dragonshire again because of those small points. Especially the big team fights that last for five to six levels sometimes. And he always has that good long-range interrupt. But there's your Joe right there for you, Tyro. Along with the newly reworked Taranda, who's been in good shape since her rework. Yeah, Hawksblog has, has her sitting at like a 61% win rate right now. It's pretty crazy. She's way in front in the win rate. And for good reason, that level 1 cleanse is super strong. Yeah, the soft cleanse at 1, definitely powerful. No slows, no roots, and I believe no stuns. Uh, Roots still effect. Okay, Roots still effect. So, so that Deckard Root will not be getting cleansed by Tyrond. Awesome. Awesome. Good to know. Still catching up on some of her stuff. I don't touch the support set often. Garage? There's that Garage ban. On the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous. Uh, kind of odd for me. Ten Armor getting tank choked themselves now. Wh who's left for them to take? Uh, They've got the Anubarak. <laughs> They've got Dahaka, who's a good pick on this one as well. So Dahaka's squeaking through so far. The Ten Armor did de decide to go with Deckard and Falstad there for their third and fourth picks and banning the Urel. So lots of solo laners, lots of frontliners taken away early. But Joe is picked. There's the Dahaka. There's a Junkrat. This this draft is looking very zone controlling on the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous right now. Yeah, I honestly don't really. Falstad's not going to be able to get in. They've got to figure out some other way to get in, or either de that maybe develop a stronger poke game or a better macro game. They've already got the first piece in doing so with Falstead and Jaina, who both have good wave clear and rotation, but maybe they can capitalize on that. Maybe something along the lines of Asanya, Stitches, and Mouthale. So they're going to opt to try to take down the double front line there. Yeah, uh, Mouthale. not a bad call. 
Yeah, Mouthy also a good solo laner. He can give Tahaka some trouble early on, and then once Tahaka starts coming online, it kind of shifts a little bit. And there's a Phoenix, so this is an interesting little draft here at the start. A lot of poke on the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous, with a nice sturdy front line to cover it, and a lot of uh, poke on both sides, really. But that's I'm interested to see how they work that Stitches in with the Jaina Falstead. If they can combo it with the Deckard and the Jaina, it should work pretty well. Yeah, I like the combo coming out from t uh, Ten Armors on the left, right? Yes, Ten Armor is blue. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. I like the combo coming up from Tin Armor. It's a little bit stronger than what I feel Drop Dead Gorgeous has. But it's going to be hard to kill Drop Dead Gorgeous' as heroes. There's a lot of escape, there's a lot of tank, and there's a lot of healing. Yeah, Phoenix with the shields. And of course you've got Junkrat there who can just sit so far back. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how both teams choose to play this. Junkrat, of course, having some of the best zone control in the game right now. You gotta mind, you got the trap, you can cover both those bushes really easily, and you can just spam for days from the back line. Especially with that grenade build, we can get the cooldown reduction. Uh, oh, yeah. As we go into this, we've got the drafts picked, we've got things set. What's your pick here, Tyro? Early game? What are you looking for? Who do you think is going to have that early game push early on? If Tin Armor can land those Stitches hooks and get the Deckard Roots on top of it, they're going to secure kills. If they don't manage to do that, then Drop Dead Gorge is going to walk all over them starting from the early game, and they're going to build a, a lead that isn't going to be able to be overcome. Definitely. I think the uh, the Sulk is going to be in favor of Drop Dead Gorgeous here early on. I'm going with Drop Dead Gorgeous for the early game. Like you said, it's going to depend a lot on that Stitches. So let's get our introductions out of the way. Go ahead and start with Drop Dead here. All right, on Drop Dead Gorgeous, we have Gelda playing the Johanna, Trent playing the Dahaka, Atna playing Tyrand, C2D2 playing Phoenix, and Unitas playing Junkrat. And over on the side of Ten Armor, we've got Dave on the Stitches, Opius on Deckard, Destrin on Jaina, Yummy Cupcakes on the Falstead, and Dagny on the Mouth Ale. So here they go, straight for the middle, as seems to be the opening scene for most most teams these days. Phoenix getting hooked early, but he is safe. Or there's a root coming in. Jaina's ring hitting hard. And actually, it's Matthew that falls. Although is. Phoenix isn't long for this world. Yeah, Phoenix is squeaking out of there. I guess his teleport was already already used. There's the false set. Barely getting out as well from that Junkrat spam. Ten Armor just needs to back out, get to those lanes, and get going. But Jaina, down she goes. So two quick kills on the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous. That's really what Drop Dead Gorgeous wants to see out at the start of this game. Like you said, you, you pick them for winning the early game here, and if they do, I feel like they just keep take control and they keep control. So if they can continue playing this way, they're in a very, very good place. The ancient shrines awaken. Control and I apologize there, folks. I swapped the overlays the, the wrong way there. Night. So we do now have our game overlay on. Things look a little cleaner. Mouthfeel is bullying Dahaka a little bit, as expected. Yeah, early on, until Dahaka can get kind of going with his his more of a bruiser style build, if that's what he chooses to go, Mouthfeel is going to bully him out there. Looks like early camp on the side of Tin Armor and on the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous. Both teams just getting on in there. One thing to note, Tyrande did not take the cleanse at level 1. She took Calderai Resistance giving a little bit of spell armor to try to resist that Jaina damage. And down goes Stitches, down goes Falstead. So definitely having the better range on the poke early on here. Jaina, depending on how she builds, can get some of that extra range, but they definitely have the more gather on that one target and burst them up build on 10 armor side. Very strong play from Gorgeous right now. I like the Hawk's movement going to middle. Knowing that you're not going to win that shrine and just trying to out soak the Matthew. Agreed. So let's take a quick look at the early talents as things have kind of slowed down on the bottom lane a bit. There's just going to be kind of a back and forth here. Stitch is going with the slam build, it looks like. Sapphire from Deckard. Oh, there's a hook. The Junkrat is shifty as ever. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get the kills on the Junkrat hook. You need to get the combo. Wait for the Deckard to start throwing down his, his root and then hook them. 
because it takes time for that root to develop. Tahaka is getting in there up top. Getting that top shrine is... Drop Dead Gorgeous is kind of just poking their way back in here. They're not too worried about it, I think. I mean, they can just get in there with the moment's notice. And Phoenix getting low again. Kane trying to throw those potions and force them down people's throats as fast as he can there. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a good job so far. Oh, Phoenix in a lot of trouble. Phoenix a little too deep after the hook, but Stitches goes down with him. Honestly, that's a little bit worse for 10 armor. They don't have their tank now, and Drop Dead Gorgeous is just going to sit here on this point. So, we're a bit of the ways in here. Let's take a look at what their viewers voted for. Who's going to win this game one? And we have one vote in the favor of Drop Dead Gorgeous. <laughs> so... 100% from the fans, it's going to Drop Dead Gorgeous. Good call. I agree with them. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the Jaina pulls something nice, except for right now she's getting caught out. She's in a lot of trouble. Joanna's still on her, but it looks like Joanna's going to walk away and Kane doing the job. Yeah, that, the, that Phoenix is getting some good damage out. That AoE is really making it rough for Kane to keep those potions down and let his allies get healed. Uh, the... Stitch's hooks are landing. They're just getting driven back away from their, their intended target. It may be a fishing hook pickup later to help secure those a little better. Junkrat's taking the top, and Drop Dead Gorgeous is getting a pick on the mouth ale in middle. And he's gonna... Oh, no. Phoenix said no. Shauna's in a lot of trouble. I think she already used her unstoppable. She's getting very low, and she dies. Down she goes. So finally, we have... Well, that's their second one. I missed the one earlier. I apologize. But kills are at 6-2 in favor of Drop Dead Gorgeous at the moment. There's a hook on the Phoenix, and he is blown up. Once that shield is down, the Phoenix does not have much health to hold up there. Stitches. Dave, they're starting to find his groove. And Falstead zipping across to the top. They know they've got the one-player advantage here. They're going to try to take advantage of it. Dahaka may be in a lot of trouble. No, they're going to they're gonna let him walk away. Yeah, they seem more interested in getting the shrine at this point than chasing chasing down farther than they need to on the point or on an allied target that can just zip on out of there. And that is a ten armor dragon. So first dragon in favor of ten armor. And they're gonna do exactly what I was hoping they'd do. They're gonna take it bottom. As I yep. said at the beginning, get the pressure on that bottom lane. All three of these camps in bottom push this bottom lane so you can keep pressure up high if you can get it early, and it makes it so much harder to hold that shrine. Not a whole lot happening right now, just standard defense. Joanna getting punted. Dragon Knight getting burnt down though with Phoenix can with the repeater there as it just ramps up an attack speed can start t taking down vehicles and stuff pretty quick. And combo that with the Taranda armor reduction and Junkrat spam and it's gonna get burnt down. So the first one gets a tower, gets a wall. And a gate, but not much on the well, not much on the fort. Something to consider is that that Dragon Knight is an easy target for Junkrat. And he is up to 40 stacks on his, his frag quest. Yes, he is. We have level 10 online for both teams. As 10 Armor is going to try to sneak this bottom night camp here. Across the side of 10 Armor, the ults that we do have... We have Putrid Bile from the Stitches. Lord Nato from the Cane going to use it to try to zone them off those shrines. There's another big hook. There's just not enough there at the moment to follow up on it. Water Elemental from nope. the Jaina. Stitches staying really far out there, trusting in that spell armor. Trusting that spell armor, trusting that healing that he has. Trusting his own self-healing. Cane gets isolated and picked off. And Dehaka snags... False that with the tongue as well. Phoenix is going to chase him yep. down. Phoenix is getting... He's going for the Stitches, too. He's... Oh. Rough, he gets it off. Oh, nice. Stitches, but he's going to die there. He is going to die in that... Slain. Getting that kill. Maltel is going to go down as well. So, 4-1 to one trade in favor of Drop Dead Gorgeous that time. They played it well, but there's... The camp pressure hurts them. There's almost nothing to take advantage right away. They're going to move into this camp and try to steal it, but... I don't know how much value that camp's going to see... 
No, with the side of 10 armor coming back up here pretty quickly, they probably just... Uh, they're getting risky here. They're going to do it. I think they're going to get it. No, there's the Lornado. They're going to get the steel. 10 armor oh, wow. going to steal it with the beautiful Lornado coming out of Deckard Kane there. Absolutely no value coming out of that team fight. Unfortunate there. That was a well-played team fight on their part. That said, finishing off the Heroics 4, 10 armor has... Junkrat, Junkrat is hooked again. <laughs> and explodes away again. This may not be a fight that Tin Armor wants to take. No, Dahaka this... burrows in. Johanna's not giving them much of an option. She just keeps that stitches nice and close, giving the undead some loving hugs. He wanted to play. She gave him the opportunity. Shrines are back up. Mathiel is pushing top with a bruiser. Finally <laughs> working our way back down. Falstead took Mighty Gust. Mouthail took Last Rites. On the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous, we have Blessed Shield. Isolation, as we've already seen, get good value out of the Dahaka. Shadowstalk from the Taronda. Purification Salvo from the Phoenix. Sorry, I was fixing the map there. And Rip Tire from the Junkrat. Lots of comboing ults on both sides there. Yeah, pretty standard. Not, not something that's really unexpected. I like to see the extra speed. Little gank on Jaina here, but I think she's going to walk away from it. Oh, and and the gust. Good gust. What a gust. Joanna is going to fall. Tyrande is probably going to fall. Phoenix may fall as well. He's trying to get out of there with that. Firing off a salvo to kind of protect himself there. He does get out. Trap Dead Gorge is going to lose her control over the shrines. I'm a little surprised about the lack of Ring of Frost here. You could couple that with the Gust or the Hook and just fit and pick a target or two off really quickly. Yeah, still going back to that Gust. That was a phenomenal play from Yummy Cupcake. Definitely. Good use of his team's towers, utilizing the deep push, turning a potential pick in their favor. Jana playing Risk going on to Haka and Phoenix, but to Haka burrows away. So 13 talents online for both. 10 armor grabbing the 14 here. They're just barely behind in XP at this point. Stitches. Stitches in a lot of trouble. Very low health, but Junkrat is out of frag charges. And they're just kind of poking around. There's more poking going on in the middle. Another big team fight going on here in mid. Tahaka gets the drag on Malthel, and down he goes again. This, this one has just been a bloodbath from start to finish on both sides. I really like the action, though. It's definitely fun to watch. Definitely. And here comes a full gank here in mid. Stitches, Falstead, both in a lot of trouble. I think Stitches is going to die, but the dragon does go to 10 armor. 10 armor. Getting the dragon, losing two in the process, three in the process overall if we count the mouth hill from before, but that dragon's just going to start pounding down that middle lane, get as much value as it can before Trap Dead Gorgeous is going to rotate up. <laughs> Johanna getting punted away again. She's a good punt target. Large, easy to hit. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Phoenix is going to do what he can to counter this pressure. He's poking down Deckard, he's poking down that fort, got the towers down, he's probably going to keep working at that. Dragonite getting low. Jaina needs to just get out of there. Get that Dragonite Six as far back as she can. 16 is online for Drop Dead Gorgeous, and Junkrat now has his unlimited nades. Yeah, and he's been landing those pretty steadily there. Gelda in trouble on the Joe, getting rooted, getting slowed. That's the combo we were talking about. There's a hook on the Taronda, and down she goes. Strong push chance from 10 armor here. They're going to go in and try to steal this camp. Phoenix did get that 4. That's going to keep the XP there for them. 10 armor grabbing their 16s as well. This is a big power spike, so let's take a look. Holy Renewal from Johanna. Going to let her heal by blinding targets. Elongated Toe from Dahaka. Darnation Archery from Taranda. She's going to be looking to put out a little more damage. Photonic Weaponry from Phoenix. And Endless Nades from Junkrat, as you mentioned earlier. Another big hook. Junkrat barely getting his way there. He's probably going to be able to walk off. Yeah. Well, hobble off, so, I should say. I know you said you, you don't touch the supports too often. Tyrande taking a Loon's Chosen at 7, plus Darnatchi and Archery at 16 is going to allow her to put up crazy numbers in healing. 
what happens is she lets she stacks her Darnassian five or six times, and then she pops a Loon's Chosen, and she starts healing any allies that she put it on for like three hundred every right click. That sounds like the build I ran when I messed around with her. <laughs> it's super super good, but Joanna getting bursted. Dang. What a play, but Phoenix getting that damage out there and keeping that slow on him. He's going to do what he can with good gust from Falsa. Going to allow his team to walk away safely. They're just going to fall back, recoup, probably take this bottom knight's camp. Yeah, there's been so much action. We haven't really gotten to touch base on a lot of the talents there. On the 16s on the side of 10 armor, we've got the Pulverize. We've got stone, Scroll of Stone Curse. That's a big favorite for Decker players right now. Dragon Knight and slaughter your enemies. Objective is back up. Breezer going to fall on the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous and a siege camp for 10 armor. Speaking of a Breezer, there's one push and keep right now. Sorry about that. I lost my voice there for a second. So Malthiel's going to slip up top and take back that shrine. And 10 armor has full control over it. Oh, nope. It's disappeared on bottom. Strong play by the Tyrande. Capturing that, knowing it was about to happen. I kind of want someone from 10 armor just to like sneak around and sneeze on that fort. Yeah. False would be the perfect target for that right now. I'd really like to see them wait, see this shrine change color, wait in these bushes here in mid and watch get a stitches hook on somebody across from one side of the shrine to the other and just get a pick off that would really swing this in their favor here. Yep, but it looks like they are going to siege up here and go and Blue take that fort. I like the call. I like what DDG is doing. They're keep making sure they can keep control of one shrine here, keeping up in the XP, just trying to get the lanes back in their favor while they can. Knowing they don't want those pushing too deep when this Dragon Knight comes back up. Looks like there's going to be a fight here. Stitches activates his Putrid Bile. Rip Tire. Hits only the stitches. Mathiel's on the Joanna, chunking her down. Water Emoto into the back line there. Goes down pretty quick. Jaina landing a good cone of cold there. Getting the bla blizzard off. Phoenix having to teleport out. Then his... The rest of 10 armor is going to kind of waddle away with some bruises here to clean up. It's about the most damage I've ever seen in a team fight that no one died in. Yeah, both teams kind of hobbling away there, licking their wounds, ready to come back and fight another day. Ooh, good stall by the Tyrande. And Mathiel's caught out. He's got the unstoppable, but there's a lot of damage. And he does fall. Yeah, that's done buying just enough time for Phoenix to work his way in there and pump out the damage that he does so, so well. Now Junkrat's got his zoning control going on down here, just popping out the grenades. They've got giants pushing. They've got the shrine in their favor. Phoenix is there and ready. Ooh, the gust coming just a millisecond too late, and good, Phoenix has the dragon. Good good effort there from the fall set. It was a great attempt, just a bit too short there. And Drop Dead Gorgeous as their first Dragonite. They're actually going to walk it mid to distract and then head on down bottom. Johanna is frozen, but they're bunched up. They're ready to push. They want to get a lane swung back in their direction here. 20 is online for DDG. We've got Indestructible from Joanna, Contagion from Dahaka, Ice Blade Arrows from Tyrande, Unconquered Spirit from Phoenix, and Cannonball from Junkrat. Piling it into that grenade build. Dude, I love grenade build. It's so much fun. You can't deny how much fun, though, the mine build is when you have a garage on your side, too. <laughs> That's, that is true. Mine is fun. And first keep is going to fall for DDG. Dragon Knight is almost done here. 30 seconds left, quarter of a health. DDG opting to back out, save their health. But they don't want to leave Phoenix too far behind here. As Mouthfield's looking to get the gank. 
punt it away he goes and that's could spell trouble he's very very low right now but he will get away on his mount dragon just about to be done i'd like to see phoenix just go ahead and pop it and get away yeah there's nothing left to gain out of this go ahead and kill it drop that last fire kill it off not even gonna get that last hit him but be down wow. the goes cannonball making its mark Yars. Tornado casted. There's Rip Tire, Salvo, Gust. Ult's Wind Tunnel is place. used, but it's doing nothing. And now Phoenix is going, or not Phoenix, Falsch is going to die. So is the Haka. is going to die in the front. Good. What a good hook from the Stitch is getting him under that tower, and Jaina, and I'm sorry, not Jaina, Kane getting the slows, and down goes Stitches. Mouthdale holding on, but down he goes. Last rights on the Joe. Not what killed her, it was a lingering dot. But the last rites was popped, and Iron Skin is what saved her from that one. So, death all around. We've got 21 kills on the side of DDG, 11 kills on the side of 10 armor. DDG gonna opt to take camps. Deckard Kane's gonna sit here and whack minions with his staff. That was a great fight from DDG, and I like the talent choice from Joanna. The indestructible, making it so that that killing blow from the last rites doing absolutely nothing to her. I'm agreed, very good pickup there. Stitches level 20 is potent and bile. Bottomless flash from Deckard. That's gonna make taking those shrines very hard for DDG. If we make it to another shrine one here. Which we should. I think 10 armors will be able to clean this up pretty easily. Winter Mute from Jaina, that's gonna up her burst significantly. We've already seen the wind tunnel. We've got no one can stop death. So Malto, when he dies, he's gonna be able to come back immediately, but at a cost of a longer death timer the next time around. I like no one can stop death. The the downside is you have to make sure you don't die for like another solid three minutes, right? That's the cooldown on it. It's twenty five percent, so sixty seconds, about a hundred almost two minutes I'd say. No the yeah, no one can stop death has a three minute cooldown. So you can't die oh, before yeah. it's cooled down. Yeah, that too. Oh, Stitch is getting picked off early. Toronto Huge almost getting fight. picked off. Yeah. Phenomenal salvo. Good rip tire. There's the last rights knocking out the Dahaka. Wind tunnel to secure the escape. Good salvo from the Phoenix. Taking down three. Now they're getting a last rights pick off there, though. And... Yomi Cupcake and Decker are just going to kind of rotate around. They're going to try to beat Phoenix up here to this top shrine. If it's just Phoenix, they can probably win this from him. They need, I feel like they need to make the effort. They don't know where Junkrat and Joanna are. They're afraid yeah. of it. Is Falstead's flight done cool down there? Oh no, so close. And that's going to cost that Deckard, Deckard his is life. Dead. That's going to cost false at his life, too. Yeah, it's late game. It's hard to want to take those risks there. If false flight was up, I would say you, you you put him in there and immediately E out if you see they're all there. Fly away to safety, down to the mid maybe to try to cover. But this should, with the death timers, Malthiel's going to be the thing to watch out here. If he can get his dot on this thing, it could go down pretty quick. But level 23, Dragon Knight... Should take this. Phoenix down. is getting melted. He is almost dead already. There's the last strike. No. Jaina silence to Haka. And as we mentioned, the last late game Dragonite is just so powerful. Yeah. So GG game one goes to the favor of DDG. One and oh, let's take a look at the stats from that game. Yes, sir. Yep, just waiting for him to load. All right, here we go. We've got 27 kills in favor of DDG to 12 for armor, 10 armor. Lots of <laughs> tank. Look at all the tank done by DDG. 121k on the Joanna, 60k on the Dahaka, taking up a lot of damage. And Phoenix Definitely. putting up those numbers. So are Jaina. Yeah, so your thoughts on that first match there? Honestly, I feel like the game is a lot closer than these numbers represent. 
in the end, DDG kind of took control. But I want to say from the three minute mark to maybe about the 13 minute mark, Armor 10 seemed like they were in a dominant lead. I agree wholeheartedly. The fight shifted once Junkrat started getting those stacks. Dahaka had better sustain. And the more of that sustain that Joe took, she just became harder and harder to kill. Backed up by the Taronda healing, which is in a really good spot right now. We'll see how long Blizzard lets that live. But I have to give my MVP to Dahaka. Because while Armor 10 was winning all of those fights, Dahaka was double soaking almost the entire time. I can't argue with that. So, we're going to go get set up for game two. It is going to be on Infernal Shrines as we kick off to game number two. 1 0 in favor of DDG. See y'all in a minute. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two. After the music is cut here, game number two is going to be on Infernal Shrines. Right now, the match is in favor of Drop Dead Gorgeous 1 to 0. This is going to be 10 armors picked, so let's see if they can swing this back and get the draw with their choice of map here. Drop Dead Gorgeous is going to have first pick. We're going to be loading up into the game here shortly once the teams confirm that they are ready. Taro, your, any lingering thoughts from game one? What would you like to see from game two? So I don't want to see Armor 10 change your style. Dragonshire is very much so about the skirmish. It's very much so about split soaking the entire game. And that's what we saw DDG do. However, Armor 10 really wanted that team fight style. And that's the whole purpose of the objective here on Infernal Shrines. Definitely agree. So we're jumping right into the draft here. Genji immediately banned this game again from the side of DDG. No surprise there. I'd like to see maybe a respect ban on that Phoenix. I feel like he put in the work. 
I'd, I, I foresee a Phoenix or a, especially a Junkrat on this map ban for coming. Junkrat's got such good wave clear here. That said, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Asmodan ban coming out. This is a great map of his. Um, as far as my own thoughts, there's the Dehaka. That That's a good respect ban yeah. there. I like that ban. He's very strong on this map. Uh, I am a solo lane player, and whenever I played this map, Sonya or Dehaka are my go-tos. They can hold the, the shrine by themselves and let the team team fight. They can split soak. They can come in late. They're just great utilities to have, and I like the Dehaka ban. I do too. Jimmy, the second ban on the side of DDG. I'd like to see everything stay the same as far as what they were doing on both sides. I feel like 10 armor just needed to get something better to s s hold that front line down. Stitches just couldn't quite do it with all that damage output, especially going with slam build. I respect Taronda ban there too, but um, a lot of people kind of give me crap for it, but I like the, the regen build on Stitches, but if I'm stuck running him solo, he, he can hold up for days with it sometimes. I'll have to believe you. I, I have to believe that's good. I don't play Stitches whatsoever. No Stitches games for me. Deckard coming out on the side of DDG this time. We saw him on AG or Arm, 10 Armor last time. Did I say Stitches? I feel like I said Stitches. You said Stitches. It's Deckard. Case. It's Deckard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you can't get the ban in, steal him. And there's an Alex pick. I'm actually surprised she made it through the draft, but you got to respect the other team sometimes. This is probably one of her best maps. That dragon form can just clean up the shrine. It can keep everybody off of it. Joe, another good option here with the obvious AoE. So let's see how DDG plans to react to this one. I'm digging the hero steals. DDG grabbing the Deckard and then 10 armor replying by grabbing the Joanna. Ooh, we are going to get to see a hammer game. We this could be hammer. a real treat. Hammer, hammer. As a former hammer main myself, in fact, when I first started the game, hammer was the only thing I would play. Back That's back in the old hammer days, too. Beta hammer days. Was she good then, or or not so much? Started out good, like, right at the beginning of Alpha. Then Beta, she got, got swapped around. And then by the time I actually got into the game, she was... Kind of a troll pick, or at least that's what people told me. But I was winning games with her, so I wasn't too disappointed. But, you know, bronze level lead so, back then. So she was basically a Nova. Yeah. Oh, that was my other most gotcha. played hero back then. What a shocker. So Artanis coming out on the side of <laughs> Tin Armor. And Maiev on the side of DDG. There must be some strats in Division B that I'm not aware of with Maiev on this map. There's got to be a reverse threat that I'm not aware of because Artanis is actually one of the stronger counters to Hammer with that full distance swap that she can't avoid. Well, and then to have the team that's going against her ban him. Kind of shocking. Yeah, but uh, don't forget about that Unstoppable. It's actually got a pretty decent little cooldown and it's enough to let her dodge the swap and get out of the way for a little bit. So There's the Sonya. I like the Sonya. Sonya Li Ming. So they've got a solid front line for this one. Li Ming, good for the cleanup, but she can struggle a bit on those shrines. There's too many minions in the way sometimes. Wave of Force might be a good option here. Or just, I mean, if they're looking for the cleanup, Disintegrate would work too as well. I'd like to see the Wave of Force kind of help zone people out, knock out of several of the minions at once, possibly get a good pick off from a safer distance. Yorel and Junkrat. Those don't surprise me. So DDG going for, for a very simul similar build, very strong front line, into two extremely strong poke heroes in Hammer and Junkrat. Uh, kind of feeling they, they need something like maybe a Cassia here. Cassia is a little rough against Hammer, though. Thrall Tychus, okay. I can dig the Tychus. He's one of the heroes too. that that beats Urel outright. Um, fun fact: if you want to watch the solo lane this game, it's going to be the most boring thing you've ever seen because Urel and Sonya simply can't kill each other. Yeah, agreed. So we've got our final draft picks. What's your thoughts going into this? Who's got the advantage going into it? Who's got the advantage in the long run? I feel like if Li Ming plays well, she just can destroy the hammer if she's not positioned right. If not. 
the hammer from Junkrat, the just the poke, it's too strong. You've got Decker to help keep it there with the pots. They've got a really nice setup over on DDG. I agree, and as we're loaded into this game, it gets mad sometimes if I try to talk while it's loading. So forgive the <laughs> silence. And... Honestly, I want to see Tin Armor play the way that DDG played last game, where you're willing to lose some team fights in the mid game and just throw the Sonya somewhere else and split soak. Get as much soak as you can and try to get that level lead. Agreed. Thanks for covering the silence there. As you saw my, that loading bar at the bottom kind of helped froze up for a second there. <laughs> I don't know no why worries. it does that, but you know how finicky hots can be. So on the side of 10 armor, we have Dave on the Johanna. Opius on the Alex Straza. Yummy Cupcake playing the Tychus. What is there? That's an ironic name for a Tychus. Dagny on the Li Ming and Sonya on the Je or Jestrin on the Sonya and Dagny on Li Ming. Same thing though. On the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous, we have Gelda on Muradin, Trent on Yurel, Upna on Deckard, C2D2 on Junkrat, and Unitas on Sergeant Hammer. So going back to what I was trying to say before the game said, no, shut up, let us load. Um... The only concern, big concern I kind of have coming out of this one is the combo potential coming off 10 armor. You have a lot of potential burst, but you don't have any good lockdown to kind of secure it in there. You got the Joe Blessed Shield possibly at 10 and the pulls, but it's going to be a lot of pick a target and try to chase them down on that first pull. I could see maybe a Sonya leap this game, trying to get onto that hammer and trying to get onto that Junkrat. Oh, and Cupcake is getting blasted down, and there he goes. Junkrat just being a nuisance yet again. So ladies and gentlemen, we have our drafts, we have our first picks here. We've got Laws of Hope, Circle of Life, Press the Advantage, Power Hungry, and Warpaint on the side of 10 Armor as Li Ming is getting blasted down here as well. What do we got on the side of DDG? Burden taking third win, Urel taking Maraud's Insight, Decker taking Sapphire, Junkrat taking Put Some English on it, and Hammer taking Ambush. Both teams are choosing a very, very self-sustaining build. Agreed. Agreed. We're chat chiming in saying that Sonya doesn't stand a chance against Zero here. So, now ladies, there. ladies and gentlemen, we've got both our picks. We've got a level one talent zone. Make your voices heard in the chat. Who's going to win this game? Let us know, and we'll take a look here towards level 7 or 10. Trying to get a gank on that Murden, but that's never going to happen. He's just going to save his leap for Condemn and then hop away. I see the point that being made by Pugs God over there in the chat. Sonya can't really get that spin to win off to uh, get that self-healing against URL. She's going to save that W for every time it happens. Yeah, absolutely, and that's how URL should play it. Honestly, though, come level 4, come level 7, if Sonya takes the spin cooldown, it's not really going to matter. She's going to get the spin to win regardless. She goes power hungry. Wow. Oh, no, okay, okay. She went hurricane. I don't know why it showed power hungry first. <laughs> power hungry is the Lee Ming talent. What? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> That's not right. So the top shrine is going to be our first one here as the fight is cleaning up in the bottom. Both teams moving after the cleanup. Joe decided I'm going to run in here and get me a few people to kill. But her team kept moving without her there, so possibly just there to slow the rotation down a bit. Yeah, at this point there's no way that URL can actually stop the spin. The cooldown reduction from Hurricane is just too strong. Nice little lead, but Tychus way too far out. He's going to get away. Dragon popped. 
Junkrat getting low. Tychus is on him. But Muradin doing a good job body blocking that. Decker just shoving potions down his throat. <laughs> trying to keep him alive. I do want to give props to both Deckard players here, being just marksmen with those potions. And I do apologize, looks like the stream got real laggy there for a second. Murden's dropping pretty low. But he's receiving a lot of healing from that Deckard. It looks like he's going to be fine. Both teams just content to try to trade minions, but A armor is going to win this. Armor's gonna Joanna getting low. And the big thing about Alex is you've got to get you've got to be able to get that damage on her. She's just gonna keep healing people up the entire fight. Especially if she can get the globe. Especially if she can get some. Not have much of poke damage. Not have her health dropping too fast to keep topping people off. And she's got the W build at level one. So later on she's gonna have globes all pretty much every cast. DDG having to back up. Low health, low mana. Just try to siege down this this Punisher, but he's still very high health. This could be a keep. Not a keep, a fort. Do, 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 do. Alright, he's getting bursted now. John Gret showed up. Yeah, Hammer Siege Fire a little lessened over the recent rework, but she's still one of the more deadly things against vehicles, especially when she hits 10 and gets that... Sieging, fl I've gone blank on it. I used to take Napalm Strike. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's Napalm Strike. <laughs> it's good. So, 10 armor opting to invade the enemy camp here, but DDG this has is sniffed a it out. Risk. Why? Very risky here. Let's see what they can pull out. Murden getting melted, though. Taika's doing a lot of damage. Murden looks like he's going to fall. Murden falls. Sonya has to back out. They are going to end up getting the camp, though. Yeah, DGG is going to have to do something about getting to that Tychus. Lot of damage on that Murden. And Murden, for all that he can do, he's actually probably got one of the lower tanking health pools without Avatar. Sony getting bottom camp. They just took their own siege camp. Putting a lot of pressure on the map. This is phenomenal play from Armor 10. Or tin armor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to struggle with names all night. It's one of those nights. A lot of back and forth. The hammer is just kind of content to hover about, get the stealth, and fire off another shot. But as you see from the Alex there, they're just going to top it off and keep going. So ten armor going to be looking to push with the siege camp here. Armor or hammer is a little too far out, but she manages to sneak off before they can do anything about it. Tigus gets getting... blown over the wall and he is dead. <laughs> Great mine from the junk rat there. Yurel is here. She's going to be looking to help secure somebody else. There's a stun. Joe is dropping quickly. There's a slow from Deckard, but the big heal from Alex. But it may not be enough. It isn't. But hammer gets picked off in the process. A minion deciding, a minion possibly a tower. I was watching the Joe more than I was Hammer. Yeah, I didn't actually see how Hammer died. Yeah, unfortunately we missed that one, but the level tens are online. So so far the call for ten, armor ten working out here early. On the side of our tin armor, I'm doing it too now. Good, good, goodness. <laughs> Blessed shield from Joe, life finder from Alex. No surprise there. Commander, commandeer Odin from the Tychus. Wave of force from the Li Ming. That's gonna help against that hammer. And leap from Sonya. You called that one. There, Tyler. yeah, absolutely love the leap call. You've got two very squishy targets in the Junkrat and in the hammer. Um, on the side of DDG, we have Avatar as expected. We have Ardent Defender, Stay a While and Listen, Rib Tire, and Napalm Strike. Oh, I'm looking forward to some Stay a While explosions. Absolutely. A good Deckard can win a fight. So the poll was closed. We only had one vote. We'll show it after the. Tychus gets destroyed by that combo. There it was. Rip tire going out. 
<laughs> all the ults are down on the side of pretty much everybody except for Leap and Lifebinder here. Joe getting low too. This one's swinging in the favor of DDG this time around. Is now that Hammer's got the Napalm Strike, she's got the Hover. She's able to do a lot more than just sit there and be, be a sitting duck. Very fast Punisher going towards DDG. It is a Mortar Punisher, a little bit of damage. However, it lacks CC, it lacks the hyper damage from the lasers. Yeah. We'll see if, if DDG can do anything with it. They should be able to get a good push, even if 10 armor is going to draw this thing away. They've got the hammer and Junkrat. Those both good at some, doing some CG damage. As the front wall already, already has gone down. Hammer's just going to sit as far back as she can and keep poking away at the fort. Li Ming trying to get to her. But Yummy Cupcake surrounded again, but is saved by the Lifebinder. C2D2 is low, and down he goes. DDG got a little too aggressive there. Gelda also having to run very low health, but Li Ming does not want to let him get away. No, this could be could be bad for Gelda. There's an orb that just barely misses. Good. Beautiful good stay a while and listen. Hitting four wow. of the five. Deckard had a story to tell, and everybody found it quite boring. <laughs> but, but they had to listen. But Uncle... You, you, you don't interrupt the old man. You have to listen to the story. <laughs> Joe chose not to, though, in that case. Camp pressure coming out from 10 armor again. I'm a little bit surprised by Li Ming's build. What do you think about the, the orb build in this scenario? I'll tell you as soon as my uh, stick and overlay turns back on. There it goes. Apparently it didn't activate. Sorry about that, folks. Late night casts, all kinds of fun. Orb build, the main reason I can see it here is because of the shrines. You're not going to get much value out of any of her spells, really, during the shrine, but at least the orb build is going to help secure some of those points, and really what she's looking for is the orbs that hit hammer, and she's going to have to be doing those at max range as it is. So that's where she's going to get the most value out of it, is against Sergeant Hammer. Alright, I can, I can live with that. I play the a little Ming, I play a little Hammer. The Fort in middle, basically down to a single auto attack from a ranged minion. Yeah, Tychus and Joe getting in here, trying to work at the front line there. Deckard getting the root on the Joe, going to buy his team some time. There goes that Fort. On the top lane, I thought that was the middle one that fell. The sun just yeah, securing the fort. Yeah, I did too. Sonya finding a lot of value from against Urel right now. Another risky invasion here from Tin Armor. Seems to be paying off though. Sony starting to rotate to mid to gather that experience. Ten Armor are playing a very solid macro game right now. Definitely, they're playing very aggressive, and that's going to work in their favor here as the game continues on. Alex is done with her quest. Murden's only at 13 stacks of Stormbolt. He's struggling a little bit with that one as we hit the 12-minute mark. Moving in, I was kind of hoping to see Hammer set up for this objective, but they are going to take top Bruiser Camp. So 10 armor was picked with the one vote we had, and that's what happened to my overlay as I was trying to turn that on. Actually, at the start of the game, I, I was leaning more towards DDG again, but I can see 10 armor winning this. Leap from Sony onto the Junkrat. Murden leaps onto the Junkrat. Junkrat low. Junkrat's gone. We do have the Odin out. Odin is out. Sonya's spinning her way to victory. R Rel is doing her best to zone them out and buy her team a little bit of time. Odin is just cleaning, making quick work of that shrine. So is Sonya. Li Ming and Alex just kind of topping off the Joe. Alex hopping off the Joe. Li Ming just kind of throwing some spells out to help keep him zoned out. And this is a quick, quick shrine over into Ten Armor's favor here. It is an arcane shrine as well. However, that bruiser top did take that fort. Yep, Sanya made her way up there, not quite in time. 
On we go. Arcane Punisher, the big bad Punisher. This is the worst one to have when you're down numbers, but they've got everybody up. They've got their ults. They should be able to fight right up here with it and draw it back. Lead it I, I like wall. 10 armor coming in with this. You want to push right through that keep and come up and fight with that Punisher because it does so much damage. Let's zoom on out here so we can see all the action going on. That Punisher is being kited away. Very nicely done, keeping it off the fort. Those arcane lasers, though, they deal out some serious damage. It finally turns, gets a few down, gets a few hits in, gets it down about a quarter of health. Junkrat man, gonna isolate the Tychus. Here comes the tire. Some damage done, but there's a ring waiting for for ten armor. Definitely. Good prediction by the Alex there. Kind of holding off, waiting until after the tire's been out for a bit to get that ring down so her team can gather up as soon as it's taken, the damage is taken. So I'm just starting the top night camp. The rest of the time we're starting the bottom left siege camp. I feel like DDG can finally take their own siege camp, and they are going to get it. I think five of them being there gave them a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna throwing out her blessed shield super early. So both teams roll back and forth here. They're dead even on kills, dead even on forts. And land ownership as it is. I lost my train of thought there. They are very closely matched right now. Thank you. <laughs> Tin armor Tin armor has a little bit of an advantage. They've got about a full level lead on DDG and half of a keep down bottom. Yeah, so what D DDG needs to do is they need to find find that one point, maybe on the rotation up here to this top shrine. They get a Junkrat mine ready through one of those those chokes. See if they can't land a good mine to isolate somebody away from their team and get a quick pick. Get that shrine Look, fight in their favor pretty early. It looks like they are going to try to finish off this keep, though. Odin is popped. They want this fight. And they're probably going to get this pretty easily here. Odin's just going to sit back and do the damage. Hammer's trying what she can. There's a good stay a while. Two man stay a while. Ooh, but it's it. Just oh. nullified by. Beautiful rip tire. Getting the Sonya knock back. I'm pretty sure there was a mine there, too. Yeah, but honestly, I feel like it. if no one else dies, it's a worthwhile trade. J Junkrat leaping in way too far, and Tyka secures the kill. Lifebinder keeps him alive. DDG is in a lot of trouble. Ten armor. And Tyka falls. Falls as well, so three to one trade here. DDG needs to quit chasing. They need to go start that shrine. They need to take advantage of this. Okay, I like the camp. Might as well grab it. You're here. Your shrine taker is the one is Yorel at the moment, I would say. Don't let DD... Uh, Hammer's got a lot of... Shrine clear. Yeah, but she has to sit there and take it sometimes. Those little buggers yeah. can be a little more annoying than they seem. As long as they can get there before all of... 10 armor is there and get kind of a lead on those minions, they should be in good shape. But Dave is going to head on up there. He sees it's frost. He's going to go ahead and fire it off. Here comes DDG though, they're ready to go. Merton gets the Mer stun. <laughs> Finishes quest, finally, level 18. It's been a tough one for him to get in there though. I mean, Joe has just been yanking him around every time he tries to do anything. Tin armor is up, it looks like they're coming up. They are very late to the shrine though. They need to decisively win this team fight. Rail leaps into the back. She knows they need to get Tychus out of this. Big but she was line. alone. Getting Junkrat out of the fight. Yorel is low. Taking a little too much damage off it after leaping in there. The well is down. They all managed to get a drink from it first, though, so at least they're going to get some value from it before it falls. Joanna and Alex trying to zone them off. Tychus coming back in with his Odin. What's left of it? There's the sleep. They need to surround the Joe. They're trying. That Alex healing is just so big. 
Now Hammer's the one trap, but she's gonna zip on out. Yorel is low. Riptar's gonna use, be used to Riptar. save her. There's the life binder pulling Tychus back up to full health. Very low on the Deckard. Yorel Yorel's brave. low. They've got 30. They need to back off, top off, and make another push. Don't don't keep fighting here to the death. You've got a few minutes. Joanna's going to fall. No, she's not. <laughs> no, she lives. Mura's going to fall. And there's the Bless Shield. Both Joanna oh. and Murden fall. Sonya falls. What a fight. Wow, damage all around. Both teams were so low at one point. Level 20s are online. Let's take a look as this shrine is cleaned up by DDG. On the side of 10 armor, we got blinded by the light. More shields from gel, man. 10 armor is about to be very, very hard to kill. Life Finder getting its upgrade, activating three times over six seconds with Ritual of Life. Sizzling attacks from the Tychus. More percent damage from the minigun. Repulsion from Li Ming. Now she's got the long range wave of force. So that's going to make life hard for Hammer. Sonya opting to hold hers for the moment. We've got Rewind on Muradin. Seraphim on Urel, Respect the Elderly on Deckard, Cannonball on Junkrat, and Advanced Lava Strike on Hammer, and this keep is going to fall in keep. favor of DDG. Keep is going down, and everything I just mentioned on the side of Tin Armor, if Deckard lands one good sleep, that swings the whole fight one direction. That silence is so powerful. We did have Sonya pick up the Ignore Pain. I see it. She's going to need it. That's going to allow her to follow up that major wave of force there and just stick to that hammer until she's down. I feel like Tin Armor needs to avoid those extended fights. They want to win the burst. They want to pop the Odin. They want to dive in with Li Ming and just kill people. And once that fight starts to go on for a long time, they start losing that fight. Definitely. We've got a leap from... Oh, Deckard. Big sleep. Good there it is. Good sleep. Riptire He's going to live. Riptire. There goes Lee Lee Ming. Ming falls. Murden just keeping Tychus in place here, keeping him out of the fight. Joe is still chasing. Tin Armor is still chasing. That hammer is low. They want the hammer. I don't know if this is worth it. They need to run. They're out there, Lee Ming. They're finally going to back off here. Didn't quite secure the kill. I feel like the missed opportunity there to, to turn the shot calling onto the Tychus that was stuck in the back line thanks to Muradin. And they got in the turn on the Tychus. Didi. Hammer comes back in and finds herself the subject of attention for Sonya. Junkra and Tychus both end up falling to basically each other. Yeah, and Tin Armored made the call and jumped back to their Tychus. He was being stalled out by the Muradin alone in the back lane, very deep. They probably would have picked up, gotten the kill on the Muradin there. Both teams cleaning up, taking camps. Got two catapults pushing in the top lane here. Sanya's just going to come over and give them a few good whacks. Yeah, they'll never see the light of day. But we do have DDG deciding to go ahead and take this bottom fort. All right, now the game's slowed down. Where, what do you think about the current state of the game? And what does each team need to do to win? Well, at this point, 10 armor is not out of it. Both teams have a keep down. They are lacking one less fort here. But they've got the potential to set up a really nice combo, a really good pick on the hammer or on Kane. Anybody, really, I don't suggest focusing the Junkrat or the Muradin. But a good... Good wave of force onto Kane, or Hammer is going to blast him into that backline with that improved wave of force. Get the Blessed Shield off. Fire up the Odin. Let Sonya take him down and start pushing him back with Odin. And just start push, zoning them out, getting that control, because wave of force has such a short cooldown. I agree. And once, once you get that Li Ming reset start happening, it's going to get to be a one-sided fight really fast. Yep. That needs to be their focus. Get that first pick with the wave of force pool. Hammer and Sonya alone. Or not Hammer. Murdered and Sonya. I just saw a bunch of hammers. <laughs> he was <laughs> hammering on her. That counts. Middle shrine is up. It's going to be Arcane again. Very aggressive coming from Dave on the Joanna. 
I like it if he can stay in the middle. He's got enough survivability now. He just needs to stay in the middle of that team fight and keep them split out. Very big sleep coming out of Decker. The silence on three people. It's going to wear off before anything can happen. And Dave just Almost. staying in there. There goes the hammer. I saw the wave of force. That's what we were talking about. And there's that orb build coming in handy here on the hammer. Very aggressive attack from... Ten armor. They're going right back in. They want the Urel of all people. Life Finder goes down on Sonya. She's going to leap back in there. Joanna's looking pretty low. Cannonball starting to see a lot of action. Li Ming's Li falling low. Murden heaps. She, Li Ming's gone to the Murden. Ten armor overstayed their welcome, and DDG's trying to make them pay. Tychus going a little bit deep for that Murden kill. They both leap on Tychus. He's dropping very fast. They need to back out. Back out of there, boys. The shield's coming from Johanna. She's trying to pull him off. Keep Give her team some time to get out. That's not going to be the case. They're going right back in there. Junkrat going down. Murden going down. They've swung this back the other way. Overstayed their welcome a little long, but they pull it out. And they're going both? core. Yeah, they're looking for the end. This is a good chance. You've got the healer down. You've got the tank down. It's Urel and Hammer alone to stop them. And it's and only Urel a 20%. Thinks they're going up. And that entire team fight, minions and catapults are pushing bottom lane. Yeah. Hammer calls the GG. Game two goes to 10 armor. Well done. I, such a thrilling fight there. I lost track of that bottom lane. <laughs> and so did everybody else, it looks like. Yeah, I didn't even realize that there were Winions on the core. Amateur casting, Taro. Amateur casting. Amateur casting. Yeesh. So this one finishes with a 1-1 one -one draw. Let's get a look at the match some as we flip on over. The kills there, 12 in the favor of DDG and 11 in the favor of Tin Armor. That speaks about how close that game is. The game just felt like it was back and forth the whole time, and Tin Armor just able to pull away with it. Definitely, that last shrine was the make or break fight of the game. They were at, both teams had twenties, both teams had a lane down, and credit to uh to Tin Armor there noticing the Winions pushing and trying to do their best to stall. And now I see why they they overstayed their welcome. <laughs> I feel bad for missing that, but well done. But stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to get an interview from each member or each. Yeah, we're going to get a member from each team for an interview here. Since this was a 1-1 draw, we're going to start with 10 armor as they did take game number two. Tyro, if you'll do me a favor, go ahead and reach out to the captain of 10 armor. See if we can't get Dave in here to have a little chat. He is in love. He is in love. That's all the people are going to hear because I jumped immediately as soon as I saw Dave <laughs> pop in here. Dave, how you feeling? Hey. Man, that was uh, just seemed like an intense nonstop team fight. That final uh, fight, man, it was such so intense, so long and drawn out. Even we missed the minions pushing on the core. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we were pushing at the end there, uh, Jestrin, was, he didn't even realize that their core was at 20%, so it was just... Uh, a really close game so very both games very entertaining both very close even if you ignore if you don't go look at the scoreboard of game one the kills were a little more heavy on the side of ddg game one but it came down to the that last dragon knight at the level 20 so let's go yeah, let's definitely. recap game one how, how did y'all feel going into that one with the draft that you had i think we felt pretty good about the draft um in hindsight the the junk rats displaced really did a number on us so um i uh, as the main tank i was Definitely feeling out there, like just getting burned down. So I, I had a lot more deaths than I'm used to. So definitely hats off to the Junkrat. Yeah, they definitely had a very, very aggressive team game one. And Junkrat can definitely do enough poke to stitches to make his life a little difficult. And then he becomes one of those things where if you hook him or he jumps between the hook and your intended target, you're not going to get anything out of it a lot of times. Exactly. 
Um, yeah, we were prioritizing globals there, and uh, I think we got a good value out of them early. I think we got the first two Dragon Knights, but uh, their team fight late game was way better than ours in game one. So. Yeah, Tyro, you got anything from game one? Yeah, uh, after the end of game one, it felt a lot closer than what it actually looked out on the scoreboard. How did you guys feel af at the end of game one whenever DDG pulled the win? I think we felt okay. Like, we weren't too uh, demoralized. We, we felt like it was a pretty close game, but they just kind of ran away with it at the end there. So we had a few kind of staggered deaths at the end, but, um, yeah, it didn't. We weren't too bummed out. It wasn't a stomping, so. All right, and moving into game two, you guys decided to to give the respect bans on, on both the, the Dahaka and the Tyrande. Mm -hmm. What went into those decisions? So the Dahaka was actually doing great work top, and uh, our Malthael player was saying he just couldn't get much done against them because of the uh, the cooldowns on the tongue for the basic or the auto attacks was just uh, wrecking him. So I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. I didn't really see what was going on. I was more focused bottom lane, but uh, definitely that was that was part of the Dahaka ban. Um, Dahaka is also really strong on Infernal in our opinion. So uh, yeah, and who else? I can't remember second ban to be honest. Tyrande. Tyrande. Yeah, she's just really good right now. I was watching HGC earlier, and uh, it's it's weird to see her as a solo healer finally, but um, she she was playing well too. So. Yeah, we, we just wanted to get that one out of the way because we weren't planning on playing her. Definitely, yeah. The Huck opting for that more Bruiser-style build there against the Mouth Ale, and that later in the game starts to give him more an advantage as he can constantly keep Mouth Ale locked down. And yeah. then if he takes that Essence talent, or he can just hog that S hold that Essence up, and he starts hitting for about three to 400 a hit. Wow. The yeah, Huck gets a little uh, ridiculous. Playing well, definitely. Game two, Joe opted for the... For the Joe, the Li Ming, Li Ming. A little bit of a surprising pick at first to me, and yeah. then I kind of realized what was going on there. You, they had the hammer. You needed something to reach that hammer safely. Mm -hmm. And as Tyro mentioned later on, that she went the orb build, and it, we started seeing value from that late game, especially when she had the increased wave of force, able to displace that hammer on that final shrine fight and just absolutely get her picked off. So, Absolutely, yeah. Dagny did a great job there. Um, or build was something. Once we saw the hammer, we weren't really expecting it, and that was kind of what we had left to work with was the leaning or build, and he uh, he got good value out of it. Definitely, she can be one of the tricky. Uh, Li Ming can be one of the trickier heroes to run on that map because of those shrines. I feel like y'all did a great exactly. job utilizing yeah. it to to the advantage that or to the opportunity that was given to you. Yeah, it's not her strongest map, but man, those are just so such crazy team fights that uh still don't know quite how we pulled it off but it was a fun game definitely that the entertaining fights on that second game definitely especially that last one <laughs> it was a bloodbath 23 kills total mm -hmm. between the two teams felt like way more than that <laughs> <laughs> there were the healing from kane and your uh your uh, alex both of them topping 110,000 alex actually pushing wow. over into 120,000 Day, uh, you had 134,000 tanking on Johanna. Murden had 147,000. Yoro had 95,000. Sonya had 85,000. So the, the fights were just two to three minutes, four minutes at a time. And y'all's healers both carried. Y'all's healers carried both teams that game very well, keeping everybody alive. Tyre, uh, Tyre, you have any final thoughts for Dave before we go snag? Um, Gelly, Geldy, I forgot his name at this point. Gelda, Gelda, yeah. yeah yeah uh i've got more of a praise le less of a question in game two at that level 10 talent sonia picks the leap mm -hmm. i loved the leap call you've got hammer you've got junk rep back there it's so easy to get on them and they only had a murder and a pill i felt that was just a beautiful call and it, it's not really a talent that we see very often especially in the higher tiers yeah, I don't know if that was the plan originally, but you know, once you see a hammer comp, it's just kind of like, man, what what can we do? How can we adjust to to get back to that hammer or the junk rat? You know, the junk rat's so squishy. Um, there were a few times where Justin just called it out, and if we were if we were close enough, we we got good value out of it. So definitely, y'all yeah. did, did a great job getting to her, especially considering they had the Murden to keep y'all at bay with the stuns. They had you around to knock you away, and then they had junk rat's mines on top of that just to really. If you got close enough, 
Give me one last knockback. Oh, and he had man, a few a good ones. Yeah. yeah. And some big silence sleeps from the Deckard at the end there, but y'all turned it around. That last team fight, we were sitting there, we were wondering, man, they're, going, they're overstaying their welcome. They need to back off, get that shine. <laughs> we but... tried to back out like three times, <laughs> and it's really hard to disengage. The teams are so sticky. Everybody was just so low, you know, it's... Uh... That instinct to just keep chasing is, is uh, strong in us. So yeah, that uh that call to take the shield team shields on Joe at the end there that that paid off. Yeah, yeah, I was uh I was misusing it earlier uh, in some of the earlier team fights post twenty, but uh, I was definitely trying to keep that up and get as many um, uh, blinding lights off. So definitely well, lights off. Very good games, very entertaining games. Managed to just crawl back and get the draw after the. After dropping game one in a very, very, very close match. Dave, thanks for joining us. Thanks for letting us cast you tonight. Glad we were able hey, to snag a game. Jumping. Yeah, I appreciate you guys casting. It really uh, adds another layer to Definitely. the Definitely. Come check check us out in Div D and Tyro over in Div E sometime when you have free time. And, well, and yeah. good luck to y'all. Hopefully y'all make that final push into the playoffs. All right. Thank you. Take care, Thank guys. Thank you. Take care. All right, I was actually unable to reach Gelda. Oh, that's a shame. It is. We'll give it a minute here to see if he responds. So any any closing thoughts here on this match? You know, they were so close in positioning in, in the rankings for NGS. I, I knew it was going to be a middle of a pack, like kind of a fist fight, but they delivered so much more than what I expected. And those games were so close. The teams were very evenly matched. Yeah, it definitely was one of those matches that showed teams are, they know they're middle of the pack. They need to make that jump into the top six. They were out for blood, and it showed. Definitely showed. I think we had between both matches of 40 kills. Something I'm definitely like going to be looking around for their, their round four matches just to see if I can get in and watch those because it's very entertaining watching those games. I agree. It looks like we're not getting anything from Gelda. Unfortunate, we went offered to interview both both teams in a draw. If he does reach out later, maybe I can hop into a one-on-one -on -one interview with him or something. But that's it from Mystic Hots tonight. Thanks to my co-caster here in game number two of what was originally supposed to be a doubleheader. Tyro managing to stick around. We found another game to replace the doubleheader, second doubleheader match. And thanks again, Tyro. It's been entertaining. It's been enjoyable. And thank you for jumping in as my voice has been going out more and more. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, Mystic. I definitely appreciated the chance and had a lot of fun tonight. Well, thanks again, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the cast. Good luck to everybody in round four as that starts up Monday. Mephisto will be available, so we'll be looking, seeing some interesting matches next week with the playoffs on the line and a new hero available. I expect a lot of Mephisto bands. Yeah, that's what I just said, like, off the mic was, yep, available to ban. <laughs> <laughs> well, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Tyro, once again, thank you for jumping in. Take care, man. Look forward to doing some more casts with you. Absolutely.